Entities are central to CloudSim's insight generation process. Let's take a closer look into entities, what they are, how they're used, and what information you can get from them. CloudSim ingests millions of logs, enriches them into records, and compares those records to rules. When a record matches a rule in CloudSim, an entity is extracted from the record and a signal is created. Then, signals with the same entity cluster together into insights. As you can see, entities form a crucial part of the insight generation engine. What are entities? Broadly, entities are a thing tracked by CloudSim. Entities are tracked based on unique identifiers, such as an IP address, MAC address, hostname, or username. CloudSim admins can also define a custom entity. Custom entities can be any field in a schema, like an application type. Rules in CloudSim define which entity gets extracted if there's a match. Let's take a look at an example. I'm already logged in to the CloudSim environment. If I go to Content and then Rules, I can see all the rules in my system. Let's look at this match rule as an example. On the left, we see the conditions that the record must match for the rule to trigger. On the right, we see the signal that's created. And here, we see which entity or entity should be extracted and tracked. We can also see the severity score that's assigned to the signal. Each signal is assigned a severity score between 0 and 10. An entity's activity score is the sum of all the severity scores associated with that entity from the last 14 days by default. Once an entity has an activity score of 12 or higher, the signals associated with it trigger an insight. Let's return to the CloudSim environment and click the Entities tab to see the entities currently tracked in our system. Here we see several usernames, hostnames, and IP addresses. For example, the username Rico Dynamite currently has an activity score of 5. This isn't enough to cluster into an insight, but it may be a good place to start a threat investigation. Let's dive deeper. Click the entity you want to investigate. When you click an entity, you'll see a timeline of every rule that entity has triggered. Scroll down and you'll see the current state, which includes all active signals that contain that entity from the last 14 days. Scroll further and you'll see all prior activity associated with that entity. In the left pane, we have the option to suppress the entity as well as modify and view its tags, criticality, inventory, and audit log. Suppressing an entity will prevent it from being part of insight generation. For example, you may want to suppress entities associated with your pen test team to avoid false alarms. Criticality modifies an entity's severity score. For example, if we assign a 2x multiplier to Rico Dynamite, they would have an activity score of 10 instead of 5 right now. You might assign such a criticality to a known bad actor. Tags allow you to categorize entities so that you can respond to different threats differently. For example, you might use different tags for your production server and your test server, or you might assign different tags to your CEO and your interns. These tags will help your analysts sort and prioritize insights. Analysts can also reference tags within rule logic to customize detection for a single entity or a group of entities. The inventory contains details associated with the entity from other sources, such as Active Directory, Azure, or Silence. Here, we can see a normalized version of the username, as well as the full name and given name of this user. Finally, the audit log contains additional JSON information if it's available for the entity. I hope this video helps you understand entities in CloudSim. Thank you for joining.